Hey, what's up? This is Paul Solt from Super Easy Apps. I'm continuing the tutorial that I gave for Lambda School on test-driven development. So we're picking up with where we left off in the previous video. And I wanted to add some more functionality. So if we look back to our design, if I jump back into Keynote, the design that we're following, we've implemented the, the first three and we've written some tests to, to verify that they sort of worked as we expect. Now we wanna test that it's expired. But one of the challenges that we're running into with our test code right now is I've put everything in one code file. And this was convenient to get started to at least make that first test pass and make some progress. But it's now a lot of up down movement and we can leverage the sort of the multiple panels in Xcode so that we can have our different codes sort of side by side so we can see more. And this is useful when um, we have multiple files. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna extract all of this logic to a separate code file so it's no longer in our test file. It's enough progress that we've made. We wanna extract it, then we wanna verify that everything still works. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click on uh, my view controller or this file, and I want to add a, a new file into the project. Now, this is not going to be necessarily for the test code, so we'll do a new file up here, and we're going to do a Swift file. Just hit next. And to start off, I'm going to to add it to just the the main target, but we actually do want to add it to both. So because we're doing our logic tests, we've turned off the dynamic loading of the unit of the application bundle. We do need to check this. So you can shortcut this and, and just hit create. Uh, I'm gonna show you how you can add that after the fact if you miss that when you're working on this on your own. So let's go ahead and create that. That'll create a new code file. And then all we wanna do is we wanna jump down into our trial period and we wanna select all this code. We'll cut it with command X and then I'll jump back over to trial period and we'll paste it here. Now, if we build this, it should build uh, because we've written code and we've tested it. But if I try to test it with command U or doing the, the testing shortcut, we're gonna see that we get an undeclared variable trial period and unresolved identifiers. So this is because it can't find our test. It's actually failing to compile our code in order to fix this up, what we're gonna do is we're gonna select our, our code file. We're gonna go over to this window. And there's a few different places to do this. The easiest one is just to select the code file and then open our side panel. And if you see this little checkbox, if you click that, that will now make it work. So we can do a command U to run our tests, or we can click on this to, to run the tests and we'll see that it succeeds. So it runs all of our tests and it works. And the reason that this works is because it's statically linking our, our actual trial period with the unit test itself. The default implementation of a, a test target in Xcode when you create a new test or a new project is to turn on this host application testing. And that is slower than we want for our unit tests that are gonna be logic-based where we're testing stuff that doesn't rely on the user interface at all. When you do want to test things that might rely on the user interface, that's where you want host application set. You can create multiple test targets. So if you wanted to, we could create another testing target and you'd be able to add that this way. I'm not going to do that for this since all the tests that I want to test are going to be unit tests in this tutorial. Okay, so we've refactored our logic a little bit and we've cleaned that up. So now we're ready to, to keep going. We want to test that it's not expired on start. So let's write a test. And what's not expired, let's say test uh, trial period is not expired. So we'll just make that explicit. And if we want to, we can clean these up. So test date expired is seven days after install date. That's a great name. We could also um, insert trial period uh, in this. So it's more verbose so that you know what we're testing. Uh, if you've got a lot of classes having this type of stuff, just 
just refactoring any of your, your test names. So test trial period default duration is seven days. That's, that's establishing the business logic so that someone reading the test when it does fail, it's like, okay, what is this supposed to be doing? And they get a good mental model for what it's supposed to do and what's not working. All right, so let's finish this down here. And we want to test that it's not expired. So I'm gonna use a new method. We're gonna do XTC assert. And I'm gonna say false. I wanna assert that it's not expired. So I'll say assert that this is false. And then I'm going to try and call the trial.isExpired method, which doesn't exist yet, but we're writing our unit test first. So this is red. This is a compilation failure. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to our trial period. I'm going to hold the Alt key and click on it. That will open up both of these code files side by side. And I'm going to reduce the font size just a little bit so I can fit a little bit more onto the screen. And then I'll try and hide this panel for now. So when you can't see the error, you can just click on it and, and see that. So we see that it's it's failing to compile. So we need this, this method. And if I hide that panel with the keyboard shortcut, that's command zero, that will hide that panel for us. We can see a little bit more on the screen. So now what I wanna do is add a new method. Now I'm gonna add this as a method, so I'll put that below the initializer. And I'm gonna to default to true. So I'm gonna say, yes, it's expired because I want to have failure before I have success. So we see that this failed, it's not false. That's great, so let's make it pass. Again, we're writing, now this is this is where maybe test-driven development can be a little bit strange. I just wrote return true, return false. I stubbed out the method, I made sure that it could compile, I returned the wrong value, uh, much like I did for the, the trial period default duration. Here we'll return false, and that is all of the production code I'm going to write for this unit test. That asserts that the behavior is what we expect, and that's enough. Granted, we're not finished, but this is how test-driven development works. I need another test to test the other condition. So I wanna test when we time travel into the future. And in order to do that, I'm gonna use the time traveler. We haven't quite used it yet. We've, we've used it a little bit, but just to, to generate dates, which is great. Now we want to fast forward time. So we need another test that we can write and pass to make sure that this actually works when we fast forward in time. And then we'll write the production code that will finish this method. So we're gonna actually write two tests and then we should have some working code. All right, so what is that test gonna look like? Well, since my, my default behavior is to expire after seven days, I'm gonna write a test that does that. We'll call it trial period all right so test trial period expired after seven days now to write this we use our time traveler and we're going to time travel by either seconds or days i've set this up to time travel by days now uh, it's one thing to note that you want to make sure you use that calendar method to jump forward in time, traveling by seconds and then multiplying 60 by 60 by 24, if you're doing that type of math, uh, is error prone when you're going over sort of day boundaries. So when we're dealing with day boundaries and especially like hours, um, daylight savings time totally changes time in different locations. Like Arizona doesn't use it, other places in America use it. So it's like weird. Uh, around the world, people have sort of different concepts of how time works and how they interpret certain things. And sometimes they pass laws to change how that works. And so to deal with all those quirks, you wanna make sure that you're using the code that Apple provides because it will take care of all of those situations for you. So we're gonna call this travel forward by days. This is a, a, a function that I wrote for you and I can just pass seven. And then we want to make sure that this is now true. We want it to be expired. So 
we go ahead, we run this, we should see failure. That's, that's what we expect. We want to have a failed test to start. All right, so what do we need to do to make this pass? Well, we have to think about what that logic is that's going to, to make this work. And we have some values that we can store. So I'm going to write this as verbose as possible. I'm going to say, okay, well, let's get the current date. And I'm doing this because we have the date generator. So I'm going to generate a date using that. And then what I want to do is I want to compare that. Now here's where you could write invalid logic. Um, we might put date installed instead of date expired. You want to be careful about that. And, and so that's where testing with confidence, making sure that it's doing what you expect is, is good. So we can test this and let's go ahead and what do we want to do? We want to return true. So what we're saying here is if the current date is greater than or equal to date expired, then it's expired. And so we're just going to say that if it's exactly seven days in the future, it's expired. Um, if you go back a second, it won't be expired and you can test that on your own. So you can pause this video, write a new test, test by traveling forward seven days and seeing that it's expired, and then test going back one second after going forward seven days and see that it's not expired. All right, so we have a, a test pass here. That is great. And now, the, sort of the moment of truth. We've written all of this sort of test-driven development code. We've got this stuff working. You can see our unit test here. There's more to do, so there's the reset trial, and there is um, maybe establishing some more confidence. Uh, but before we get into that, let's jump back and see if we can get this to work in our view controller. So the next test, once you've got sort of tested code, is integrating it. Let's integrate this code, and I've already written some of the integration logic here. So we want to test if it's expired. I'm going to get rid of our demo so we can just comment this line out. And to make this work, what we want to do is uncomment this line on line 13. So what you should have should look like this. We should be able to build it. It should compile. And now we have a missing argument. So here it's expecting a date generator, but I want to use the current time. So in order to make that work, what I'm going to do is update our logic a little bit. So we can, we can do that and we're going to look for our trial period. We're going to look for our initializer. And in here, we can pass in a default parameter. So if I just say date.init without those parentheses, the, the parentheses will autocomplete. You can just take those off. And this is what you're looking at. So it should just be the initializer. We're basically passing a function just like we did before. This is a default one, but what that allows us to do is by default, it will actually use the current time to generate time. And otherwise, in our unit tests, it will use our unit test time. So that's what we've been able to do to make that work. And if we go ahead and run, what we're expecting to see is that it should give us a date into the future that the the app is expiring seven days into the future. And we see that today is January 30th. And what I'm seeing right here in the app is that, this is pretty tiny, that it expires on February 6th. So that's exactly what we wanted. We're actually running the logic that we've written. All of this code has been tested and there's still a little bit more to do, but this is a great starting point. This is something that you can practice. Do this again follow the different steps, and just try to get this to work. And you will start to understand how you can test code that deals with dates in your own logic, as well as how to write with test-driven development. All right, so congrats on finishing. Try it again. And I've got some challenges in the one of the documents on the website. So if you want, we can jump back on over. 
And in the, the lesson, if we scroll down to the bottom, you'll see some challenges that you can leverage. So testing with more confidence, we could add a, a test to test that it expires after 21 days. And we could add a test to make sure that the reset resets it to the current time or whatever logic you want. All right, so those are some other ideas. Um, the other thing that's important for a trial period is you actually have to store this data on disk. Having it in memory is not going to work. So if you try to release this in a production app, when an app goes into background mode, eventually it gets terminated. Then it needs to load state back. And if you don't save that to disk so that when you start up again, it's going to never expire for your users unless they only use your app. They never reset their phone. It's always plugged into power. It never installs updates. Um, that's the only time where this would work, where it stays in memory and you wait the seven days. But if you actually want this to work, you actually have to save this to a disk. And you can use something like the Codable protocol or the keyed archivers to save to your documents directory on your iPhone. All right, so that's kind of a starting point. I'm going to put uh, two more comments in the code file. And let's go ahead and grab this one. I'll just comment these out. These are future things that you can test. Um, the, the point of testing after 21 days is it establishes confidence that you can actually change the, the end duration date and the logic will still work. And that helps you verify that you're more comfortable with shipping the code. All right, testing this one allows you to test a new feature, new function, and you might want to write an extra test to just give yourself more confidence. All right, so that's a, a great place to stop. I'm going to upload this to GitHub so that you can see the final result and I'll tag it so that you can look at that and I'll have links down below. So thanks so much for watching and, and thank you for Lambda School for letting me create and guest lecture on test-driven development and doing it around time, which can actually be a little bit challenging to work with because of daylight savings, because of leap years, leap seconds, and all of these complicated things that can be changed by laws in different countries around the world. So if you want to make your app work, make sure that you're using Apple's code correctly, like we've demonstrated here, to leverage the calendar to calculate date math for you so that you don't make mistakes. All right, thanks so much for watching, and I will catch you around.